Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2022. This is the Gerard Perigo Laureato 42 pink, gold, and onyx, and it is everything the name implies. 42 millimeters in diameter in pink gold. The watch is 10.9 millimeters thick from lug to lug, just the case. It's 49.3 millimeters. If we include the end links of the bracelet, it is a broader 52.6 millimeters across the wrist. Full matching rose gold bracelet. We'll throw the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. And you can see it wears broad, but it also wears thin. It would easily slide underneath the cuff at under 11 millimeters thick. And though it is broad, you can see that the shape of the lugs mitigates against fit issues somewhat. So I think you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. Again, my my wrist is 16, oval and cross section, and flat across the top. Taking a quick look at the bracelet, it's important to remember that the Laureato is not gloaming onto the modern fad for integrated bracelet sports watches. Back in 1975, the first Laureato was part of the initial class of such timepieces with a case that integrated with its lugs that integrated with a tapered integrated bracelet. And when I say integrated, I mean, take a quick look here. This is not something that's designed to pop off quickly, nor is it a simple conforming end link like you get on a Rolex bracelet. Case, lug, and bracelet flow into one form. You can see that we have satination outboard. We have polished center links. The satination on the primary links, it's actually transverse, an unusual treatment on this type of watch. We have removable links, and as you can see here, all of them are fixed by screws. Taking a quick look at those links, you can see that we have an intermediate sized link on each side. So if you do find yourself in between sizes, this gives you a little bit more precision in sizing up the bracelet. Double fold, twin trigger release. You can see it's all polished internally. It is a sequential close with one side closing before the other. GP logo right there externally. There's also a little transitional bevel that starts on the flank of the case, continues down the lug shoulder, and then continues perfectly aligned across the edges of the individual links. This is a nicely finished and likely labor-intensive bracelet. Screw-down crown. The watch is 50 meters water-resistant. The base metal versions of this watch were 100. This one is 50. Now, I should mention that with a screw-down crown and a 50-meter water resistance rating, this watch is still suitable for surface swimming. Don't go diving with it, but it should be fine for the pool or the surf. Taking a quick look, one of the interesting features of this watch is how it references Gerard Perigo's design icons. We have that same rounded polygon used for the shape of the crown cap that's used for the bezel itself. And then you can see that the hands and the counterweight to the second hand, basically one half of a Gerard Perigo three golden bridges tourbillon bridge. And you can also see repeated that logo on the dial. So little nods to the company's heritage. Now you can see that there's transverse satination across the top of the case. We have longitudinal satination on the flank. We have those bevels. We have a bezel that is circular satinated across its top, but on its flanks as well as on its little plinth beneath, all of high polish for contrast. Taking a quick look, you can see the dial is all black, but this is no mere lacquered dial. No, no, no. This is black onyx and Gerard Perigo advertises that it takes 15 steps to get the bare material to a finished dial and that includes a lot of cutting and manual polishing and buffing to give it a wonderful lustrous bottomless almost gloss wet material look like you're staring into black lacquered paint. We have a little disc for the date that's also black in good taste. We have rose gold hands, rose gold applique indices, and GP logo. And it's important to note that this is an unloomed dial, so more of a dress watch take on the modern Laureato 42. The watch does have some subsidiary setting modes here. We've got hacking seconds. Then we've also got a quick set date mechanism so you can rapidly cycle the date. And they use a wonderful serifi font with open nines and open sixes 
for the date disc. Screw that crown back down, flip it all over. This has the more upscale and more modern of the two Girard Perigo automatic movement families. This is the 1800. The older 3300 has a shorter power reserve, and the 3300 is 26.2 millimeters. This is 30 millimeters, so it better fills the case back of a large watch. Also, the 3300 has a 46 hour power reserve. This has a 54 hour power reserve. Of course, the stop seconds, the quick set date, pivots on 28 joules, beats away at 4 hertz or 8 beats per second. There is a Etichron arrangement or Etichron like arrangement for fine adjustment. And then we also have a eccentric screw ultra fine adjustment mechanism for fine tuning. Architecture of the movement is handsome. As you can see, there's a large symmetrical bridge for the mainspring barrel. And you can see that the ratchet wheel is black polished and then the barrel beneath has a solarization. We have multiple different finishes on the rotor at center. The rotor is beautifully beveled on its edge. It has circular Cote de Genève all the way around. And then we have linear Cote de Genève on the bridges themselves with engine turning on the outer lips of the bridges. You can also see that locating pins used to help place the bridges on the base plate. Those have been polished on their head, very similar to what Patek Philippe does. We also have black polished screw heads with chamfered slots and circumference, a satination on the wheels, including the reduction wheel for the winding system. We'll flip it all over once more. More. And you can see that everything is nicely detailed to a standard that is impressive. You can see the mirrored bevel right there adjacent to the balance. That's a higher level of gloss and gleam than you're going to get from something like an Audemars Piguet or an FP Journe. A Gerard Pergo doing things the right way here. Reach out to Timasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of a watch from a very underrated and newly independent manufacturer.